I think I have my motive for the remaining second shot. It immediately caught my attention because of its smooth lines and uh, the angle of the, of the light that's currently falling on this one. You can see that it splits in two. But it's so smooth. And uh, also tall and fat enough to, to not, not um, shake too much in these windy conditions. So I will set everything up now. I'm not sure just yet what, what uh, composition I will make of it. Whether I will go closer or step, step back to, to capture more of these uh, vertical, vertical uh, lines. Whether should I step more on the left or should I step more on the right. I, for me, this, this angle is more interesting. Let me know what you think, what, what um, kind of composition would you go for? Vertical, landscape, close up, wide angle. I've decided to go for a more of a close up and uh, from a straight angle right here where the, 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 two, um, the two trees or one tree, I don't know how to say it, the two stems are um, um, behind each other. So there is no gap in between, but the so-called gap is formed by the shadow that, uh, that falls on the second tree, on the second stem. As you can see, the light is constantly changing. I will uh, set my camera up now. Um, to remind you, I'm using Zebra ISO 2 glass dry plates that are uh, mostly sensitive to uh, UV and blue light. So yeah, some sun will be very welcome so that I can uh, shoot a, at a faster speed. The wind is quite powerful, so even this strong tree is, is, um, is um, going back and forth. But yeah, these are the conditions I have to deal with. I will probably fast forward now to set everything up, and uh, then when I have my composition ready, I will show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. Oh my, it's extremely, extremely windy, but, and also the light is not at the right place at the moment, because we are in winter time, the sun is going down quite fast, and right now there is one tree covering the, the, the first uh, part of the tree right here. All right, I've set everything up for my second shot. My uh, poor camera died in the meantime, because it's really cold. So yeah, the, the battery is draining like crazy. Let me go under the dark cloth to, to show you what I... the composition I ended up with. Right now the light is still quite good. Like I said, I mean, I, I uh, compose my image in a way that the first time is uh, covering the second one and that there is this beautiful shade in between them. This way it's... Um, it's not right away obvious that uh, these two trees are coming out of the same out of the same um, out of the same stem. But yeah, this shade here, if you look closer, um, you quite soon realize that oh yeah, <laughs> this seam here is where the two the two stems split. Let me take my zebra dual plate holder out. Alright, got it. 
I will have to stop filming now so I can insert the holder and then we're gonna discuss further. Okay, the holder is in. Currently the, the, the tree is not well lit. Like I said, the sun is going down very fast. So the, it's passing by the trees and they are throwing shade on this tree right here. So it's just a matter of a few seconds which I need to wait and the light will be right back. Um, I've also just metered my, my exposure time which is one quarter of a second at f5.6. Right now it's 12, half past 12. Um, so and it's a completely uh, bright and sunny day so the the amount of UV right now is the the biggest but the UV levels in the winter time here in Slovenia are um, are very low anyway so I've uh, metered this um, this scene right here for ISO 2 and uh, when it comes to uh, selecting the right exposure time with zebra dry plates I uh, warmly invite you to check out my uh, brand new zebra dry plate site where you can also uh, find a user manual and in the user manual I've, uh, I've uh, put together a, uh, an exposure guide for each month from January to December and uh, yeah you can, you can, uh, you can check the, the charts there it's based on, the, on like a calculation You're, you'll be calculating the right exposure time depending on the time of the day light conditions, um, time of the month, and so on. So you're, you can get a pretty good idea of what the correct exposure should be in the, in the given moment. I'm just about to leave, but I lost my lens cap somewhere in between these, these leaves right here. They are being blown away by the wind all the time, so... Oh yeah, found it. I was just about to say that I'm gonna have to print myself a, a new landscape, but... There is no need for it anymore. This is the, the wild cherry tree, aka zebra tree. I overexposed it for uh, one stop. I'm developing it in Kodak 8 Sigma 110 Dilution B. My usual development developing time is 5 minutes. I think I maybe went a bit too far with the exposure of this one. We will see. Remember that with the development of uh, dry plates, especially also zebra dry plates, you should always develop a bit further than what you think. Um, because at the end the blacks that you see on the in the in the negative being developed won't be as black uh, later on on the on the transparent glass. It's not looking too bad, to be honest with you. The cherry tree definitely stands out, which is what I, which was my my main goal in the first place. I don't know how much you're gonna be able to see. It's the first time that I'm using this uh, GoPro 5 because my old camera that I used in the darkroom doesn't turn on anymore. I have to get it fixed. Yeah, I think it's gonna be slowly enough. I think I'm gonna finish 
developing at around two minutes. Yeah, I think this plate has enough. I'm gonna wash the plate in uh, tap water for a minute. You should always agitate very gently because the emulsion is very fragile, especially with some holders that you might be using. The, the um, edges of the plate could get damaged and uh, that is a weak weakness, like a weak spot when you start developing. Usually the emulsion starts to leave there and then uh, if you agitate too vigorously it will just uh, start peeling and peeling off there. A few more seconds. And uh, now I started fixing the image, which is gonna be five minutes with uh, constant gentle agitation. When you put it in the fixer, the whole image immediately becomes very, very dark, but as all the unexposed silver highlights will get removed on the bottom here, also the image will become brighter. I hope that my second shot will develop just as nicely because I would really like to have both of these images perfectly done. still some highlights left with some fixers the the fixing procedure may take longer but with a rapid fixer which I'm using five minutes is usually more than enough yeah you can see the the marbling or the stripes on the tree it's looking very good this plate is pretty much fixed already but uh, you should always um, proceed with the fixing for a few more minutes just to be sure that uh, everything is removed When you have a few plates to develop, it's you always have a, like a, a rush to to develop and see the images as soon as possible. But this is definitely not the the best time for rushing because these things needs time. I think that uh, I will stop fixing this uh, this plate at four minutes. It's gonna be plenty. And now I will uh, slide the plate in my final wash, which is simply tap water. I usually change the water a couple of times just to get all the fixer out because I don't really want to end up with a with a fixer stains. And now let's take out the the second shot, the second plate.
Like you see the use of zebra holder is very easy, pretty much as simple as it gets. Alright, my fixer alarm went off, I will set my timer back to 5 minutes and uh, let's see what we have on the second plate. With a correctly exposed plate the negatives should start appearing about 20 to 30 seconds into development. So yeah I can pretty much say that this is a well this is gonna be a well exposed plate. For more details on development and uh, use of uh, zebra dry plates I invite you to check out my brand new website. You have a user manual there. You can check it out in detail, it's uh, www.zebradryplates.com There was really a lot of contrast on, on this image because the, the tree was uh, lit by sun and the shadows were very strong. So, at the beginning of development, when the shadows are, are um, not uh, on the image yet, it really looks like very graphical, it has a graphical look to it, just white and black, nothing else, no grays. But then the grays will slowly start to come in as well. Right. I'm happy to say that I believe I have another very beautiful and nice image here. I agitate every now and then. Usually for 5 seconds every 30 seconds. Both of these plates were metered for ISO 2. I hope to get a bit more details on the back side of the tree right here. I think they will start coming in in the next half minute or so. Sometimes it's also very hard to see the, the negative appearing because your safe lights should never be too bright so you will uh, also the, the, the safe lights that are too bright will uh, fog your your plates so you should always check your safe lights and the brightness if it's if it's too too high if it's fogging your plate you should uh, lower it down i will develop this one for five minutes I can't tell you how I how much I miss this. It's I enjoy and I love making plates but I love developing them even more. It's magic right there. plate is developed as well so we repeat the same as we did for the first plate wash fix and final wash
Voila, both plates are now developed and I'm very, very, very pleased with the results. As you can see, they are very different in terms of the light that, that was present in the scene. The one on the left was shot on a very, in a very dull and cloudy conditions. So the exposure is very even. Wow, you can see those stripes on the tree right here. It's really standing out and uh, this is what I wanted. And uh, then we have the second one, the tree that um, separates into two, into two parts, which was, let me just move this one behind on the side a bit, which was uh, done on a full sunlight. So you can see the con immediately the contrast is much, much higher on the ground here and also on the tree itself. However, there are still uh, there are still some shadows, some details in the shadows right here, which is what I wanted. And uh, also, I mean, down here in the highlights, there are also some details in there, especially on this crack here. But further up, there are not as, ma as many, but yeah. I think it really nicely emphasizes the, the duality of this tree see later on the positive I simply cannot wait to, to for these two plates to be dry so I can scan and uh, invert them to positives Let's first take a look at our first image, the wild cherry tree. The question I have is, did I manage to bring my initial idea to life? And I'm very happy to answer with a strong yes, because cherry nicely stands out with its zebra-like stripes. Sharpness is on point and also shallow depth of field works wonders here. I overexposed one full stop, which was probably a bit too much, but with the ever-changing light conditions, it was really hard to get the exposure just right. Anyway, I compensated for the overexposure by underdevelopment and I'm very happy with the results I got. Moving on to the second shot, which for me captures the initial idea very nicely as well. One tree that splits into two stems, which is nothing special to be honest, but what caught my attention were the shadows. I saw that I could capture the split not by capturing the empty space in between its stem, but with the help of light and shadows. This way the split is not so obvious at the first glance, but it makes you think about what is really going on here. Like with the first shot also here the light was changing fast, so a bit longer exposure would be welcome here. There you go guys, we came to the end of an almost 50 minute long video, which was split into two parts. I hope you enjoyed watching this second part as well. And what should I say, I'm very happy and uh, glad that I finally went out in the field again and that my efforts uh, were uh, paid off at the end with two beautiful shots. If you enjoyed watching and uh, following me along, please don't forget to smash that like button. Leave comments in the comment section below and of course subscribe so you don't miss future content like this. And our channel just surpassed 5000 subscribers, woohoo! I'm very happy and grateful for that. And to be honest, it's really not all about the numbers because what really matters to me is that I see how much you enjoy watching my videos and uh, that you enjoy learning about analog photography because this is what this channel is all about. And yeah, I'm, I would really like to thank each and every one of you for your comments, your views, your subscriptions, your likes, and in general your support because this really keeps me motivated and it keeps me going on. Um, yeah. I'm happy to, to produce more content for you guys and I wish you to, to stay safe, to stay healthy and uh, catch you guys soon. Bye!